Is ready now, no? Javier? Aún no. Mm. Yeah. Check, check again. Eh, aparentemente dice compartir pantalla. Ajá. Un eh, he preparado una presentación en inglés, eh, porque bueno, no, nadie me dijo que era en español todo esto y, y la preparé en español. Eh. Adelante, adelante, por favor. Inglés, perdón. Está, lo tienes, ¿no? Sí, compartimos ya. La magnífica. Vale, yo creo, yo creo que la tienes ahora sí, ¿no? Es correcto. Vale, gracias. Gracias, Javier. Gracias, doctor. Uh, my presentation uh, now is about the strategic to reduce uh, the surgical time and avoid complications from the point of view of the bi-portal and monoportal technique, nuances and concepts by, based on personal experience and literature. Um, regarding new direction, I want to say hello to everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be able to share with all of you, my dear colleagues, teacher, mentor, and dear friends like Dr. Olvera. No, so uh, since 2019, I have been dedicated to endoscopy, motivated by my sincere desire to offer the best for my patients, initially with the biportal uh, technique, and currently combining uh, the biportal and full endoscopic technique. During, during all of this time, I have had successes and failures. I have been learning from the latter to become what I am today. Fortunately, I have, the, I have had the great opportunity to learn from friends and teachers such as Dr. Hu, Dr. Hayati, Dr. Wagner, Dr. Taglim, among, author, among others. Then passes, and more and more of us are hooked of le on learning the different endoscopic spine techniques. I'm convinced that the only strategy to reduce surgical time both in biportal and uniportal surgery is through better knowledge of anatomy, observing our own experience and that of our colleagues and through careful observation. Um, the aging population is developing and developed countries is leading to significant increase in health burden in spinal disease. In the past, the use of endoscopic spine surgery was limited to the intervertebral disectomy. However, it has recently become possible to treat different lumbar degenerative diseases, such as lumbar spinal stenosis and foraminal stenosis. And the treatment range has expanded from the lumbar spine to the cervical spine and other regions. However, as endoscopic spine surgery develops, and its indication widened, more diverse and advanced surgical techniques are being introduced. And the complication of endoscopic spine surgery are also increasingly increasing accordingly. Still now, literatures on the complication of endoscopic spinal surgery are very scarce. A small incision on skin fascia and are require means less, means less soft tissue dissection. Endoscopic lens is as close to target as possible, bringing the endoscopic vision directly to the tissues involved, hence minimizing soft tissue dissection and bony resection, required to gain vision of, of opera, operating view. The side effect, however, is a two-dimensional vision of the endoscope and a difficult learning curve, both of which have to be overcome with experience and through understanding of endoscopic anatomy. Endoscopic spine surgery evolves over time to be in sync with this increasing requirement. So there are uh, different ways to classify the spine endoscopic techniques. In terms of spinal disease, for endoscopic spine surgery, there are two major disease entities, disherniation and stenosis, that we, we know very well. Any fecal sac or nerve root compression due to herniated disc or spinal stenosis can be the primary candidate for endoscopic decompression techniques. 
generally. Endoscopic decompression techniques are not suitable for other spinal conditions, such as segmental instability, tumor, trauma, infection, and deformity, as proposed by Dr. Ho. The classification, basically, you, we can divide, divide it uh, in three ways. Biportal endoscopic system, my preferred for, of sure, full endoscopic system, the other alternative, also with great worth and value, and microendoscopic system. Biportal endoscopic system, this concept is similar to arthroscopic joint surgery, when two working portals are needed as exposed before, the endoscopic portal and the instrumental portal. So in full endoscopic system, this is typically characterized by the following. Use of a working channel endoscope with the working channel and the optics in the same tubular device. And finally, microendoscopic system, this category includes using a rigid endoscope, microendoscope attached to a tubular retractor with the tissue dilators, which help minimize muscle retraction. The most commonly used system is the matrix tube assembly that uh, almost all neurosurgeons use actually or currently. Uh, so um, consideration for operative steps. This is very important to take uh, into consideration regarding the anesthesia. Uh, anesthesia in spine surgery, uh, a bit commonly we use general anesthesia, uh, that is still the most prevalent anesthetic technique. But in my common practice, I prefer, uh, in most cases, operating my, part my, my, my patients with a spinal anesthesia because a general anesthesia is no without drawbacks and is associated with cognitive, renal, and most notably cardiopulmonary complications, as well as unpleasant postoperative nausea and vomiting. Or vomiting. Spinal, as I stated before, spinal anesthesia has emerged as an alternative to general anesthesia and has been increasing, use, uh, increasingly used in lumbar spine procedures because of limited, uh, in, with limited duration, less than two hour and a half, three hours, more or less. Even uh, commonly, uh, more, uh, a lot of uh, endoscopic surgeons use the program of awake spine spine surgery with regional anesthesia. Uh, regarding the general principles to avoid complication and save time in spinal surgery, we have to consider about adjustment of the operative table height because Altho high instruments is possible uh, uh, because altho high adjustment is possible in most tables. Use of a platform can be complementary. Proper high adjustment allows surgery to be performed without shoulder abduction that can cause fatigue and physiology, physiologic tremors during surgery. In the last book published by Dr. Kiyolvera, for example, they explain this aspect of this subject very well. Therefore, ergonomic is essential to avoid strain during surgery. Prior to surgery, medical staff and technicians should review the proper working of the tower. Regarding the position, the abdomen, uh, the abdomen should be free to avoid brain bleeding. Uh, the prone position is commonly used. Here are some considerations regarding the position. For example, the goal is to avoid compression of the abdomen to prevent indirect epidural venous plexus hypertension that results in intraoperative bleeding. Control, com complete control of the airway 
Avoid excessive neck extension. In all patients, cranial side of the table should elevate about 10 degrees. Pay attention to the face, regarding the face, uh, mainly the eyes. To avoid the uh, damage of the of the eyes, the knee can be slightly flexed throughout the surgery. Systolic blood pressure should be maintained at the around 110 millimeter of mercury to reduce bleeding from the surgical field. If the line from the back to the pelvis is horizontal to the floor as much as possible, triangulation is easy as you can prevent prevent complication of wrong level surgery due to the treated approach. Regarding the endoscope, light cable uh, suction tube and camera should be proper properly tied so they don't come into the field during the surgery. Particularly, I prefer uh, I think that uh, almost all the spine surgery surgeons place the the irrigation tube the the endoscope and even the the uh, the light in the left side of uh, uh, in the personal usage in the right side i used to use the the drill and the forceps for example in uh, when i approach uh, particularly from the left side and even from the right side, it's the same. Uh, the endoscope can be damaged due to poor handling during the surgery or by a running drill that can be avoided by shielding it with a shirt. The endoscope should be held from the ASP side. The endoscope can be damaged by lifting it from the tip side, especially when it is attached to a camera. Regarding the, the, the endoscopic instrument, uh, there should be a proper selection of instruments. Um, the endoscope, a cylinder instrument with a single limb, is better because it occupies less space. Consideration regarding uh, the operative steps. For, uh, for me, it's very important the selection of, of, of approach side, position of the skin and fascia incision. Uh, we have to make a good serial dilator till 10 millimeter approximately uh, from both sides. Uh, and then in UV technique, the two incisions should be separated more or less two centimeters and a half, three centimeters to make a good triangulation. This is an important, important step before docking the, the point of both instrument at the final stage in the initial step. It's very important uh, to make a good inflow outflow uh, with the inflow passing through the endoscope side and outflow from the instrumental side. It's, this is very, it's very important uh, to make a proper muscle detachment. A, re, a radio frequency one is used to clear soft tissue. This is very important also to target point uh, if, because if one if if you want to go paramedial or paravertebral, you have to orientate the the tips of the instrument to the inferior and play of the superior vertebra. This is, is very important also, make a good remodeling or in, uh, with an intermittent drilling. Contraindication uh, of UVE. UVE, uh, according to Dr. Ho, Dr. Don Wah Ho, uh, have a mainly this contraindication, trauma or important trauma, infection, tumor, instability, high-grade spondylolisthesis, ischemic spondylolisthesis, and severe uh, scoliosis. Regarding the complications, the mean complication rate was 
when 596 patients underwent UVE disectomy for the treatment of lumbar disc herniation. Among these patients, 222 were men and 236 were women. The most operated spinal segment was L4, L5, followed by L4, L5, S1, L3, L4, and L2, L3. The complication, uh, the reported complication or the most frequent reported complication were, was a uh, dural tear, epidural hematoma, incomplete decompression, transient neurological complication, postoperative dysesthesia, uh, numbness, or root injury, recurrence, instability, pseudomeningocell, uh, hasitis, infection, retinal hemorrhage, and bone injury. The complications were associated with the learning curve and the level of skill. Previous uh, colleagues have uh, mentioned this aspect very well. In the, early, in the early learning curve, the complication rate was higher. The incidence of a hematoma, incomplete decompression, and duratia were higher in the first 50 cases. Therefore, beginners should be more cautious about preventing such complication. In sum, the main complications include um, duratia, epidural hematoma, incomplete decompression, transient neurological uh, complications, increased intracranial pressure. Duratia was classified by Dr. King. Uh, Dr. King proposed a classification of Duratia in spine endoscopy in, the, uh, in, in, in endoscopic spine surgery in four types. Four type, uh, type one, uh, there are nerve root that lift tear. In type two, uh, the dura lesion of less was less than 10 millimeter with a cranial caudal direction. In type three, uh, there was a complex dural tear. And this was regular or irregular incidental dural injury more extensive than 10 millimeter. So this, in, this is very important because this type of injuries uh, must be repaired directly, converting the surgery, if necessary, in, 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 even in open surgery. And type four, and in unrecognized dural tears, if they are symptomatic, then the defect should be explored and repaired. Um, in, uh, regarding the prevention of dural tear, uh, there are many strategies. For example, uh, Dr. Yu and Lee in 2023 reported an overall incidence of complication of less than 10%. The overall rate of dural tears is endoscopic spinal surgery. In, in endoscopic spinal surgery was two, uh, more or less 2%, 2 to 3%. Um, and the incidence of dural tear was much higher in case with lumbar stenosis than in, in case of lumbar disc herniation. The incidence of dural rupture increased to 1.1% when percutaneous endoscopic lumbar disectomy was switched from an inside-out technique to an outside-in technique. Proper cases selection prevent the dural injury, especially during the initial learning curve and by keeping the ligament flavum intact until all bony work is finished. This is very important to avoid complication, these steps, and even increase or, re, or increase uh, good outcomes and reduce uh, surgical times. <clears throat> in in sum, it is very important to have an endoscopic vision very clear, sharp instruments uh, like carry zone, punch, should be used facing away from the dura, at the, end, at the end of the procedure, check for proper dura expansion and pulsation. 
Another complication very very common at the initial stage of the learning curve is the bleeding. The incidence of por of, of por postoperative epidural hematoma in full endoscopic is approximately 0.2 percent. Control of bleeding can be a challenge, especially in a fluid media in which a small amount of blood can disturb proper visualization. Yeah, we can we can see an example that was managed with Flocil because applying pressure with the kerosene punch was not possible. Yeah, I have placed a Flocil, and after that we have a uh, better operative fields. It's better to use the tampon effect of bleeding using gentle pursuit of the hemorrhagic points. My personal preference, uh, as well as I have said before, is to apply Flocil. Following the last review of Kiyo, the appropriate and accurate use of a radio frequency probe of the bleeding fossil is very important. And the use of not coating a, a, a bull tips is very beneficial. It's important to avoid excessive and unnecessary bone remodeling. Using a epidural hemostatic matrix, epinephrine or tranexamic acid can improve hemostatic and indirectly reduce the probably or the, the possibility of epidural hematoma. Leave an epidural drain in patients in whom this complication could be expected and remove it after the postoperative MRI the next day. Other relevant points uh, are the poor, visualiz poor visualization during, during endoscopic surgery due to the lens staining uh, of because blood, bone dust, fluid, or any tissue, and all, also the precision grip. It's better a precision grip in the forceps than a power grip. Here we, we present a case of a 69 years old female with neurogenic intermittent claudication for more than five years with rapid worsening, distinctive numbness over bilateral L5 dermatomes and failed conservative treatment. As you can see, uh, she has segmental instability, a lumbar degenerative lumbar stenosis at L4, L5 due, due to hypertrophy of ligamentous flavum and disc protrusion. We have choose an unilateral lumbar bilateral decompression, unilateral uh, laminotomy bilateral decompression and fusion, fusion using UV technique from the left side approach. As you can see, I prefer an, a, small, a small profile carison. In this step, you can, uh, to remove the inferior Infer uh, uh, the inferior articular facet, I prefer the, the HCL. I lay intact the flavor ligament. I start commonly from the spinolaminar junction. Then I move to to medial border of the process. And finally, the superior border of the process of the inferior lamina. I detach the left side of the flavor ligament. As you can see it. Now we can see the dorsal and, and lateral part of the dura here. And this is the after drilling, the uh, and after a sublaminar drilling, I detach the flavor ligament, the remaining sub, uh, flavor ligament to expose 
the contralateral side and be sure that the, the traversing route is free. The contralateral traversing route is free. I check with a pro. I, I like, I want, I, I look to see if the, this is, is not bulging in order to try to remove it and check about the, the root. I try to make a proper hemostasis to avoid bleeding from unexpected or zero points. I used to place the coagulation at this stage at one or two, no, no more. I prepare the, the, I incise the disc and proceed with the this with the disectomy in this side. I use the reamer, introducing less than three centimeter into into the the this space. For me, very important to take, to be careful regarding the end plate. Sometimes it's not easy to to preserve the end plate, but have to try it. I proceed with the disectomy, making some shrinkage of the annular part of the disc and the nucleus nucleus, nucleus pulposus. And then I placed a cage here. I want I, I like to 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 separate the dura with this kind of of retractor. It's a kind of endoscopic retractor. I check for any for a, for bleeding points. Once I'm sure that there are no bleeding points, even that I I prefer to place a, a drain. Because I I used to keep the blue the the systolic blood pressure around around 100 millimeter of mercury. You can see the dural sac pulsation. It plays the drain facing against the contralateral side close to the contralateral foramen, a perfect case placement and high restoration. Tip summary, good endoscopic training is needed to prevent complication and for a better clinical outcomes. In my opinion, be sure about proper triangulation and a patent in flow outflow. Keep the ligamental flavon intact until all bony work is finished. Intermittent irrigation is between the, the short periods of drilling and using lower revolution can be beneficial, avoiding length soiling. Systolic blood, press, blood pressure should be keep around 100 uh, millimeter of mercury, approximately. It will be beneficial uh, avoiding bleedings. Thank you very much.